Yeah. Nice job. All right. <laughs> okay. Nice job. Yeah. Yeah. Nice job. Nice job. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad it's Monday. I'll pray. We'll start. Father in heaven, bless us this morning as we're uh, looking for the pearl of great price. I'm willing to sell everything I have to get it. So give it to us this morning. Ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can help me. I'll ask questions. You can give answers. Study this morning. Uh, something be- Say it. Better. I'll, I want something better, don't you? Yeah. I traded in the beer joint for a Bible. Did I get something better? Yes. Oh, yes. I sure did. Now, Proverbs 4.18, the principle of trading up to something better. Now, who'd like to read this? Let me read the first part. But the path of the just is as somebody else. It's as a shining light that shines more and more into the earth. Now, Malachi 4.2, the son of righteousness arises with healing in his wings. John 3.30, Jesus is going to increase, I'm going to decrease. Son of God goes up, we go down. And as we decrease, the light grows bright. But if we increase, your light grows dim. Would you agree? So what is the path of the just? That's the road to righteousness, right? That's the one that has the light, street lights. John 1, 4, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. I think we're ready to start. Uh, Okay, I think the noise is kind of toned down in the hall now. Remember, wave sheaf, Nehemiah 8, applied to us this morning. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. We don't look like it right now, but uh, we will, right? First John 3, 2, it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But when he comes, we're going to be like him. Mm-hmm. Ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you. Ah, there it is. Is he calling us out of the darkness, Isaiah 62, into the noonday sunshine? Yes. Next question. The journey from midnight to noonday, is it progressive? Mm -hmm. I mean, is it little by little? Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. And I use the example, I'll use it again. If somebody, I walk into Jonathan's room in the middle of the night, shine my big bright flashlight in his face, what do I do to him? I'm giving him the light. (laughs) What do I do to him? Yeah. I blinded him. Yeah, I shocked him. I blinded him. It doesn't work that way. For them, the Israelites, or for us, it's progressive. Now, you notice on the bottom of each thing, I wrote something. On the bottom, it's my writing. On the top, it's the Lord. I put him on top, right? That's where he should be. I'm on the bottom, except for this one. This one's a Bible verse. Now remember, John 10, verse 11, I am the good shepherd. Remember that verse. John 16, 12. Somebody read. I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. What's that mean? Yeah, yeah, you can't take it. Did the Lord have some things to tell Peter, James, John, Nathaniel, Andrew, and those guys? Mm-hmm. You can't take it. You can't take it. I could tell you, but you can't take it right now. Mm-hmm. But shepherds, John 10, uh, 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 10, 11, I am the good shepherd. Shepherds are patient with their sheep. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Genesis thirty three fourteen. Was Jacob a shepherd? Yes. Yes. I'll lead on softly. According as the cattle that go before me and the children, they are behind me, right? Able to endure. Now, so uh, that's our subject this morning, finding something better. I have yet many things to say unto you. I'll read this, I'll flip the button. Somebody read the next one. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. God would lead his people no faster than they could receive and act upon the important truths that are communicated to them. Yeah, that's it. Does the Lord have something to show us today? Yeah. But I saw the angels would lead mm, no faster than we can receive it and put it into practice. 2 Peter uh, 3 verse 9, the, law, the Lord is long-suffering to usward. Why? He's not willing that any should perish. That's divine patience. He's got things to tell us this morning in the classroom, 
but you're not able to bear it yet. Now, let me just ask you a question now. Wouldn't it be nice if we could come to the point that we, whatever God said, we give it to me. Mm-hmm. Give it to me. I was studying the Bible with a lady one time. Her name was Linda. Darling, I was studying with Linda. Linda said, don't tell me anymore. I don't want to hear anymore. <laughs> Because the principle, you're responsible for the light that you have. Don't give me any more. I don't, don't tell me any more. Wouldn't it be nice to get to a place, God, give it to me. Mm-hmm. Give it to me straight. Give me all you got for me. I don't care what it is, how much change it involves. Give it to me. Give it to me now. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't that be nice? Because mm-hmm. yeah. you got to get to that point before he comes. Yes. Because by the time he comes, he gives you what? Everything. Mm-hmm. And I, I, but, you know, we're, we're, we're human. I know we're weak. Mm-hmm. I am too. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 2. Same kind of verse. I fed you with what? Thank you. Milk, not with meat. Now, the purpose of the milk is to prepare you for the meat. Look at a baby. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to give that baby a big oat burger when it comes out of the womb. <laughs> Should I? No. We'll give it some. Oh. But, you know, when 35 years old, still sucking the breast, isn't that sick? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. At some point, you've got to get to the oat burger. Or the Bible said, meat, you know, the real meat. So somebody read 1 Corinthians 3, verse 2, the whole verse again. When I fed you with milk and not with meat, neither to you are not, you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. You're not ready. Now, I'll read 1 Peter 2, 2. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that one day you might be ready for the meat that you might grow thereby. Now, the question. Nehemiah chapter 8, the trumpets are being blown. Nehemiah is standing up on his soapbox. He breaks open the law. Is his purpose to feed the people meat? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Because what's coming in 10 days? Destruction. (laughs) You're going to be cleaned up Mm -hmm. or cleaned out? Mm -hmm. Deliverance or destruction? Mm -hmm. So now we just take one of those things. Mm -hmm. Having said all that, I just picked out two truths from the Bible Mm -hmm. that I tell you is meat. And the second one, really for me, I'm going to tell you, a big, thick piece of meat is not easy to chew when you just have your teeth coming in. Mm -hmm. All things are lawful for me. Now, in the Bible, I put different interpretation, different uh, uh, translations. It's lawful, but it's not helpful, not profitable, not best not expedient. Can something be lawful but not be the best? I mean, can something be legal? Not, now, the what's best is always legal. But can something be legal and not be the best? Yeah. Yeah. So now, let the meet. Genesis 2.24, the plan for marriage originated in the Garden of Eden, right? Adam and Eve. And this is the plan. Genesis 2.24. A man's going to leave who? He's going to cleave unto who? And then uh, these two shall become what? And God says, now what I join together, somebody finish it. Yeah, and that's not in that verse, but that's the principle. That is, I'll call that, the bottom line is it okay to say it's the Genesis plan. Is that all right to call it that? Genesis plan. Along the way, the light turned to darkness. And when Jesus walked into Jerusalem, there was no more Genesis plan. It had, uh, it had, it had somewhere along the way, the light had gone out. Mm-hmm. So the Lord's plan was to what? Bring it back. This is how it works. And he answered and said unto them, I'll read four, somebody else read five. Uh, I wrote on the bottom, New Testament plan, restoration. Jesus is letting the light shine. It's a return to plan A, the Genesis plan. Mm-hmm. And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And he quotes Genesis 2.24. Mm-hmm. Now, somebody read verse 6. Wherefore there, they are no more twain but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. Amen. Okay, now I read that, and I tell you what I see. This is for me. We're different. This is me. I read verse six. I see, hmm, stability. Hmm, permanence. Hmm, something I can bank on. Hmm, commitment. Hmm, right. Mm-hmm. The opposite of that, prenuptial agreement. 
temporary stopover for the night, shack up job, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you want plan A or plan B? They were working under plan B. It hath been said, whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. When the Pharisees heard Christ given the meat, they said, mm-mm, stay on the milk. Mm -hmm. But it's been said, now I'll tell you where it was said, Deuteronomy 24. Mm -hmm. It has been said, I see something unclean in Darlene, I write her out of paper, hit the road, and hit it now, and she's out. Mm -hmm. And that was the plan under which the Jews worked. Anything I don't like about my wife, she's unclean, something's wrong, she's out the door. Mm -hmm. Jesus is letting the light shine. That's not the plan. Now, in Genesis, uh, Deuteronomy 24, uh, there it is. Who said it? Is this Moses saying it or Jesus? I hope you're going to say. Jesus. All right, can I say both? Yeah. Okay, both, right? Don't, don't you say Moses. <laughs> Moses did not write Deuteronomy. Jesus did. Through Moses, the inspired agent. Moses and, Deut uh, Moses and Jesus. Moses inspired by the Holy Ghost. I tell you what, I've never seen such an attack on the Godhead as I've seen the last six months or year of my life. Attack after attack that the Holy Ghost is not God and Jesus is not God and it just does not seem to cease. Yesterday, two times it came to me, Jesus is not God, and I got an email, Jesus is not God, and I just think, Lord have mercy on us. Where are we going to end up? I tell you what, if God did not hang on the cross, then you are still in your sins. Yeah, Lord have mercy on us. Maybe you don't get all these emails and things people give me, but I get them at a relentless pace, trying to convince me to come out of the church. You are wasting your time to try to get me out of God's church. And is, there, is the church a mess? Yes. Is there worldliness in the church? Yes. Am I a mess? Thank you. Thank you. Is there worldliness in Luke? Say it, Kayla. Yes. So they point back to Deuteronomy. We got license to do what we do. My wife's no good, out the door. And Moses gave me permission. Now somebody read the permission Moses gave. When a man have taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes, because he hath found some uncleanness in her, then let him write a bill of divorcement, let him write her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand and send her out of his house. Now, Sister Mara, would you like to marry a man like that? No. You got up, you got a bad day. Sister Mara, you're out the door and don't come back. Mm. Well, that's the light was about to shine. shine. Because that's what they said. You say this, but Moses said that. Mm -hmm. And what did the Lord say? But I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife and there's a door out, right? Mm -hmm. There's a door out. Your husband commits adultery, you can ask him to leave. Mm -hmm. Saving for the cause of fornication, the, the, we speak of fornication and adultery. Fornication is when you're not married. Mm -hmm. Adultery is when you are. Mm -hmm. But the act of a sexual relationship outside of marriage, if you're married, adultery. If you're single, fornication. Mm -hmm. Causes her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, commits adultery. I can't marry a woman that got divorced if her husband did not commit adultery because mm -hmm. the marriage is still consummated. Right? Mm -hmm. Path growing brighter. Here's my question. Uh, why ask why? It's great to question to believe. You're on the road to hell if you question to doubt. Mm -hmm. Feed doubts or starve them. It's your choice. When the Lord saved my, saved my, my wretched soul, I say, Lord, I'm not going to doubt you anymore. I'm going to believe, but I got a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. God says, okay, you ask. <laughs> you bring those questions. Mm -hmm. Come now, let's Isaiah 118 reason together. It's good to reason with God because you want to know the truth. Jesus never turned away an honest truth seeker, true or false. Mm -hmm. And neither should we, right? Mm -hmm. They say unto him, and now they bring it to the point. Then why did Moses, com by the way, Feast of Trumpets applied to the people in this room this morning, mm -hmm. including me, not just me, then say unto him, then why did Moses command to give a writing of divorce and put her away? Why? Well, Moses, uh, yeah, you, 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 Moses, are out of sync. Remember what he said? Anybody remember what he said? He said 
Yeah, that's what he said. Who can read? Who read? He saith unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning it was not so. God met man in his fallen condition. But he did not plan to leave him there. Thank you. God met, and I heard Sister Aisha's testimony, that's right. God met you in your fallen condition. And he met me in my fallen condition. His plan was not to leave us there. Aren't you glad? <laughs> yeah. So Deuteronomy, I, and I called it, the Bible didn't call it that. I called it plan B thinking, right? Plan B. He downgraded the plan to meet them where they're at. Yeah. I'll read it again. Moses, because your hearts were so hard, couldn't take the light. <laughs> Let the light shine or blind you. Suffered you to put away your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. And I say unto you, this is the context, according to Deuteronomy 24. Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, commits adultery. And whoso marries her which is put away, doth commit adultery. Mm. Now, I say, having read this, and knowing what verse 10 says, it is hard for man to put away plan B thinking. Mm -hmm. It's almost, you, the Lord to get a plan B out of somebody's mind and put in a plan A, it's next to impossible. Mm -hmm. But with God, all things are awesome. possible. Now, apostolic recognition. As James and John and Andrew and Nathaniel and Matthew, as these guys heard what the Lord was saying, what was their response? Plan A, let the light shine. What was their response? Mm -hmm. They said, no good. This thing stinks. <laughs> Those were the ministers of the church. This thing stinks. <laughs> Who would want to get married with this kind of plan? <sighs> I just would you I would not want to be God for one second, would you? <laughs> Who'd like to read this pitiful statement? And his disciples said unto him, If the case of the man be so with his wife, it is not good to marry. No good he didn't get married. <laughs> I just wonder what in the world Jesus felt when he kept seeing these hard hearted people that were drinking the milk, but they didn't want any meat. Now, uh, next question. Uh, there was a there was a couple that I knew had come to one of our programs. They were Christian. They were not church members, but they were of the Christian faith. And he wanted to divorce his wife. I met with them in what now we call the hydro little thing. I met up there in that bar, sitting across the table. He was there, his wife was there, I was here. He asked me, now I'll ask you, can I divorce my wife? I caught her in adultery red-handed. Do I have a biblical legal right to divorce her? And you would say, yes. you better say yes, yes. Mm -hmm. It's legal, but it but. might, come on, say it, but, but. it might not best. be necessary, the best, profitable, expedient. It might not be the best. Huh? It might not be the best. What? Mm. I'm saying you got children. Mm. You can forgive her. Mm. You can, when I said that part, he said, wait, well, you wait a minute. How can I ever trust her after what she's done to me? Mm. The answer is very simple. The same way God trusts you. I told him the same way God trusts you mm. after what you've done to him. Everybody in the church has gone a whoring after idols and has committed adultery. Does Hosea 3, that's dwelling on that subject. Does God have a legal right to put us away? Yes. But he said, well, that may be legal, but it's not. Profitable. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Profitable. Hey, well, this is the Bible. Yeah. Now, before we read it, was Hosea a real prophet? Yes. Was Gomer a real prostitute? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's sure it's an acted out parable, but it's a real story true too, right? It's, too, it's, it's, it's true. It's, it's true too. I can't stand up. My mouth won't work. Isn't that terrible? Uh, who read? In a nice, nice, good voice here. Then said the Lord unto me, Go yet, love a woman beloved of her friend, Yet an adulteress, according to the love of the Lord towards the children of Israel, who look to other gods and love flagons of wine. Yeah, that's uh, Hosea's theme in three. You've gone a whoring after other gods, and God has every legal right to put you away. Mm -hmm. Gomer, after the marriage to Hosea, still went out with men and got pregnant. Mm -hmm. And God told Hosea, you buy her back. Yeah. Just like I bought back the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, 
uh, that man, he said, how, they're in their 30s, he said, how can I ever trust her? Easy, the same way God trusts you. I said, but here's the problem, brother. I said, if you choose to stay with her and you choose to forgive her, then that sin is in the ocean and you can't bring it back up. Would you agree? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Once you, you once the man are you say so you put it, your husband you forgive him don't you bring that up in six months from throw it in his face because God would never bring it up and throw it in your face God's never brought anything back up to me it's out in the ocean aren't you glad no. now we take all that seven day Adventist Adventist home three forty four mm. it's plan A to the remnant <clears throat> letting the light shine. Leading the remnant back to plan A thinking. A woman may be legally divorced from her husband by the laws of the land and not yet, I'm sorry, and yet not divorced in the sight of God according to the higher law. There is only one sin, which is adultery, which can place the husband or wife in a position where they can be free from the marriage vow in the sight of God. Mm. Although the laws of the land may grant you a divorce, yet they are husband and wife still in the Bible mm -hmm. light according to the laws of God. You got a divorce, that doesn't mean anything in the world. Adventist home 3044. 3044. Doesn't mean a thing in the world, what the courts say. This is what God said. Now I realize somebody, a woman, this has just happened in the last few days. My husband, mentally abusive, maybe physically abusive. And I told that woman, you got every legal right to leave him. You can, you can separate, but you can't divorce him, right? Mm -hmm. You say it in a nice, kind way. Here we're being more open. Yeah. But yeah, you can. You can separate, but you can't divorce. Mm -hmm. And you can't remarry. Mm -hmm. That just... But, yeah. but yeah, that's, that's the plan. In court, it doesn't matter. But my, my point is, this is an application of what Ezra was teaching. There are some things that are legal, but it's not best. Mm -hmm. Name one, divorce. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's one. Then I look at one other one, and I'll tell you where I got them both. I got it from Paul. Uh, plan A remnant thinking. Great Controversy 473. Mm -hmm. Now, legally, when you come into the church, legally, how much of your money is your own and how much belongs to God? once you come into the church. 10%. Thank you. 10%. That's, that's not yours. That means not yours. It's His. Now the rest of it, God makes you a steward. You, you know, you, you got free will offering. You all, you know, I know that. I'm saying, but the 10% is not yours. Mm -hmm. You take that and you stole from God. Mm -hmm. Now the widow went to the sanctuary. How much was she legally required to pay? 10%. 10%. How much did she pay? Everything. Everything. Well, she said, well, it's legal, I'll put in 10%, but for me, it's not the best. Mary, uh, Luke chapter 7, the alabaster box broke it over his head. Was she required to do that by law? No. No. Legally, I don't have to do that. She did it as well. You're a step ahead of me. <laughs> You're a step ahead of me. Yeah, that's okay. Step ahead's good. I hope you're a step ahead of me to heaven. Don't want to see you lost, Sister Kayla. Mm -hmm. I want you to be faithful. You know, that's why I know every time, you know, there, I just read the chapter this morning, Belshazzar's Drunken Feast. Mm -hmm. Belshazzar did not know there was an unseen watcher in the room. I do. Mm -hmm. Anything I say to you, God's going to hold me accountable. Mm -hmm. That's why I lift up the leadership of the church. I love God's church. I love His law. I love the 27 fundamental beliefs. And I love the, the doctrine that Jesus is fully God and died for me on Calvary. And you come and try to convince me otherwise, you are wasting your time. Mm -hmm. Man does not live by bread alone, but by what? Every, Every word. word. Go tell somebody that that doesn't read the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, I give you 75 verses that say Jesus is the Son of God. Isaiah 9, 6, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. See, he, that's Him. Mm -hmm. John, uh, John 1, verse 3, all things were made by Him. And without Him, not anything was made that was made. He made everything, Colossians 1, 16, Colossians 1, 70, by Him all things consist. Go talk to somebody that doesn't read the Bible. Try to draw them out of this church. You ought to be reading your Bible. Amen. Now, yeah, you'll get a, if you don't, you'll, one day you'll pay for it. You'll be gullible and believe that. Come out of the church. There's worldliness in the church. No, there's truth in the church, and that's why I stay. There's all kind of worldliness in the church. 
But the truth is here. Yes. I want the truth. The truth is, Jesus, uh, who quote? You, you quote Galatians 2.20? Who was that in, in the thing? Or quote, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, it's Christ liveth in me. The life I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Not till after the flood was man given permission to eat the flesh of animals. Don't worry, we're not going back to meat. <laughs> we're not going back there. We exhausted that on the Sabbath. <laughs> Why then need we, by the way, don't ever give that kind of presentation in a normal place, right? Don't hold that one back. <laughs> you know, you reach them before you preach to them. You, know, you don't want to do that. Don't go, the, don't go into uh, uh, Tuscaloosa and do that right off the bat. <laughs> Right? Why then need we flesh meat? Few who eat this... Now, I wrote the bottom part. Mr. Daniel, got a question for you. Few who eat this know how full it is of disease. Flesh meat never was the best food, and now it is cursed by disease. Uh, Mr. Daniel, why did you choose to eat the vegetarian diet at Nebuchadnezzar's table? And the answer is... It wasn't the best food. Wasn't the best food. Sister Aisha, was it legal? Yes. Yes. Don't you say it wasn't. People say today, if you eat clean meat, no, no, no. Clean meat is legal. Mm -hmm. And you eat clean meat, you can be saved. It's legal. It's not a condition to come in. It's not. It's not. If you say it is, you're wrong. Clean meat is legal to eat inside the Seventh-day Adventist church. Mm -hmm. Sure it is. There are those who ought to be awake to the danger of meat eating. Now, there have been two or three statements on the 144,000 regarding the diet. I'd like to address those, and then we, we address them together. I'm only going to say what, what it says. There are those who ought to be awake to the danger of meat eating, who are still eating the flesh of animals, thus endangering the physical, mental, and spiritual health. Many who are now only half converted on the question of diet, right, meat, will go from God's people to walk no more with them. Now, oh, wait. Now, let me, uh, can I rephrase it, Luke Key's translation? The 144,000, they're not asking what's legal. They're asking what's best. It's legal to eat meat, but it's not best. Never has been. God demands that the appetite be cleansed, that self-denial be practiced in regard to those things which are not good. This is a work, present your bodies a living what? Sacrifice. This is the work that will have to be done before His people can stand before Him, a perfected people. The 144,000, I don't care what's legal, give me what's best. Because what's best is always legal. Right? That's your reasonable service, right? To present your bodies a living sacrifice. Now you notice the verse I've been quoting is out of 1 Corinthians 10. This one is not. It reads just like it, but it's not the verse we've been looking at for the last 30 minutes. See, I wrote, not 1 Corinthians 10.23. This is 1 Corinthians 6.12. You say same verse. No, not quite. Before we read it, can a man be a slave to passion and appetite? Yes. Can a woman? Yes. Oh, yes. Guess what the two subjects Paul's about to deal with? Passion and appetite. Adultery and diet. Mm -hmm. He chose them. I thought it would be good if I chose them. Now, somebody read verse 12. You're not in the reading mood this morning, are you? Come on, somebody read verse 12. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Yeah, he changes up now, right? Because these things can, can subdue my spiritual nature. Mm -hmm. What are they, Paul? Explain yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, verse 13, somebody read. Meats for the belly, and the belly for meats. Now, we call that appetite, right? And then the next one, but God shall keep going. Destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. Passions and appetites. Is that where we struggle, or most of our struggle is? In some way, shape, or form, mm -hmm. the passions and the appetites. The great struggle for man, passions and the appetites. It will make you a slave. Mm -hmm. okay. My little children... One of my favorite verses in the Bible, because it tells you if you fall, you got a good lawyer up in heaven, right? Mm -hmm. Now, my wife 
everybody knows is a good cook. Right. You think, think carefully before you answer. Think carefully. Mm -hmm. Do I love Darlene because she's such a good cook? Yes. Now wait, we got to know when he is. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Let me, I, 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 let me change the question. Let me change the question. Let me change it. Now let me change the question. No, no, let me change the question. No, no, let me change the question. No, wait, 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 wait. If Darlene burned everything she touched, would I still love her? Yes. Thank yes. you. <laughs> and we got that one nailed down. Does Darlene able to manage the money, squeeze the penny? Yes. Is that why I love her? No. no. Darlene is, uh, she's good when it comes to, you know, keeping the house tidy. Is that why I love her? No. Is Jesus a good lawyer? Yes. yes. Is that why you love him? Don't you say yes. No. <laughs> no. We love him but he, he first loved us. That's, that's yeah, First John 4, 19. It's all, good. it's all a good thing when all that. It's, it's good. It's good. I'm, I'm glad Darlene's a good cook. I'm glad that. I'm glad he's a good lawyer. I'm glad if I sin, I've got an advocate with the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, who to righteous. I'm glad of all these things. Those are bonuses. Those are bonuses. That's the words. Well said. Yeah. Well said. <laughs> Those are good. That's a well said. But my point is. There are only three motives in the universe the Bible recognizes. First Peter 5, 2, constraint, which is force, a filthy lucre, which is buying you off like a prostitute, or four. In fact, if you buy off, uh, I, I use a, a woman in context, man, same thing. If you buy a woman, it's a prostitute. If you force her, it's called rape, right? You can use either of those bad motives for a man to get what he wants, right? But the third one is, these two shall become one flesh. That's the physical union. The spiritual is higher, but it includes the physical. What's the motive in the marriage? What should it be? God. If you marry a man or a man marries a woman, that uh, I use man woman because First Peter 3, 7, dwell with him according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. A man is stronger than a woman, and he can force pressure and push his wife to do things she doesn't want to do. Mm -hmm. If you marry a man that wants to force you or buy you, that's the wrong man, mm -hmm. and vice versa. What's the right motive? You marry a man that wants to do what? What? Shoot. What's his motive? There only is one other motive. Love. Thank Love you. you. So, a man and a woman. We're going to study this later. A man and a woman Love. consummating the marriage in the spirit of Christian love. Is that rare today? Very rare. Yeah. Now, husbands, there it is. <laughs> As we bring it down to ourselves, and I'm going to use myself rather than you. Husbands, Luke Heath, love your wives as Christ also loved the church. That is the only kind of love God recognizes in His kingdom. Mm -hmm. There is plenty. Now, is there plenty of legislation in the marriage contract? What I mean is, when I married Darlene, did I lose the right to go out with other women? Yes. Yes, thank you. I'm glad somebody said yes. <laughs> did, I, did, I, did I lose the right to uh, do whatever I wanted to do whenever I wanted to do it? Yes. Yes. Did I lose a whole lot of rights? Yes. Now, now, remember, we're judged, James 2, 10, 11, 12, by the perfect law of liberty. Are those stipulations and regulations in the marriage union, is it, is it, is it, uh, is it a uh, bondage or is it freedom? freedom? Freedom. The law is freedom. Because if you love me, John 14, 15, that's it. The law is freedom. If your motive is love. And if your motive is not love, it's bondage or force. Right? Only do what's, if you only do what's legal, you miss what is best. Well, I got a marriage. I'm only going to do what's legal. You missed it. I'll just give you the only example I can think of right now. I was going to Hong Kong 14 hours with Darlene. It's a flight from LAX to Hong Kong International Airport. We're sitting in the cheap seats. I'm folded up. It is misery and torture. Darlene says, I got to go to the bathroom. She's in the middle seat. I let her go out. She goes to the bathroom, comes back. I'm sitting here like this, been 12, 13 hours on the plane. Oh, oh I'm not. Yeah. She starts giving me a massage. Oh, okay. And you know what I tell her? I said, come on, sit down. You're tired. But what I'm hoping is what? <laughs> she won't sit down. You know when she sat down? When the flight attendant made her, because we were getting ready to land. Aww. Now, is that required? No. No. If she'd only done what's legal, I would have been missing what's 
best, yeah. and so is she. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. This is the kind. Of, this is what Ezra is teaching on his soapbox. Judgment's coming. This is what Ezra's teaching. But in the now, we look at it in the future. In the final restitution, what's there going to be? Hey, a new earth. Is it going to be better than it was when Adam walked in the Eden? Will Eden be better in the future than it was in the past? There's your answer. Before you answer, there's your answer. It's going to be better. It's going to be something better. Now, I don't know how God's going to improve it, but He is. Restored more gloriously adorned than at the beginning. So when the Bible says, 1 Corinthians 2, 9, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man those things that God hath prepared for them that, what? Love Him. Now this is where the test comes from me. I'll interview myself. Lou, yeah? Is marriage good? Oh, yeah. You like marriage? Yeah. Stability? Yeah. Security? Yeah. Good home life? Yeah. Good food? Yeah. Anything you don't like about it? No. I like it all. And Jesus comes down and He says, Luke, Keith, there's not going to be any marriage in heaven. Mm. Now, what do I say? Do I say, no good? <laughs> now, same test Peter had, right? Do I tell him no good? No. <laughs> but I think, you know, what? Something better than marriage? And He says what? Yes. yes. <laughs> How can it be? <laughs> there's no marriage in heaven. Ladies, you think you're going to go to heaven and marry a man? You're, you got to do under delusion. <laughs> there's no marriage up in heaven. Mm -hmm. But there's something. Better. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know what it's going to be, but I look forward to finding out. Yeah. I don't know. This is a step beyond Genesis plan A. <laughs> this is like, you know. Yeah, now, now, here's my test for each, for each one of you. Can you recognize that as something better? And I say, Lord, I do. Yeah. I can understand, but I understand. <laughs> now, uh, as we near the close here, because everything, everything I've been reading, I'll show it to you in one paragraph. What's Satan's purpose? And about separation. That's it. What's Christ's purpose? Christ, we become more closely united to God than if we had never fallen. But you did fall, and Christ mm -hmm. said, it's going to be better. Mm -hmm. How's that going to happen? I told a man sitting at the bar, your wife has committed adultery. He caught her red-handed. I said, you can forgive her, and after the crisis in the marriage, you can be closer than you were before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right, Sister Moore. I say amen, too. Mm -hmm. And that is a reality. Mm -hmm. So I put on the bottom, God turned defeat into victory. victory. Mm -hmm. And now here's the paragraph that everything we just said is in one paragraph. Mm -hmm. right. To me, one of the best things you'll ever read on planet Earth. Well, or it could be one of the, or it could be one of the worst, D depending how you look at it. Mm -hmm. Those who feel the constraining love of God will not ask how little may be given to meet the requirements of God. Was it singular, the cell phone? They say they set the bar higher. Mm -hmm. Jesus set the bar lower. He got a little low, so he could go a little high. Mm -hmm. He made it what was legal down here, but what's best is up here. Mm -hmm. And you can squeak in the back door by doing what's legal, mm -hmm. but you'll never enjoy the great blessings he wants to give unless you do what's... I read it. They do not ask for the lowest standard they aim at perfect conformity to the will of their Redeemer. Amen. A profession of Christ without this deep love, that's what it turns into. I mean, doesn't it turn into that? Talk, dry formality, and heavy drudgery. Now, just to be honest, if Darling got up every morning and said, what's the least I can do for you today? <laughs> well, can you make me breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> She'll say, will you wash the dishes? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> you think you could iron my shirt? Iron your own. <laughs> I mean, what kind of marriage is that? It's a loveless marriage. Well said. And we, and we pull that kind of thing with God. What's the, what's the, is it? Yeah. That's it. That the two examples I chose because Paul chose him 
it will enslave a man. And that's what Ezra is talking about. End of Nehemiah 7, beginning of Nehemiah 8, the feast of trumpets, calling the people to prepare for the judgment. What's God looking for? Aaron represents the people. Somebody that wants to give him the best. best. I'll pray. Our Father in heaven, that's the Feast of Trumpets in 2019. Bless us with a heart that can receive it and uh, willing to put it into play in our own, in the action and the way we treat others. You know I'm a man of unclean lips and my prayers are all stumbly and don't make sense, but you know my heart, read it, and give me a heart that wants to please you best and most and above everything else. And I ask this thing for my friends, in Jesus' name I ask it, amen. Yeah. Now, who did their homework?